Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you all for being here. Thank you for having me here. I'm very blessed. I hope you've all enjoyed uh, listening to and refle reflecting upon all the amazing experiences and journeys of our um, amazing guest speakers. I know I have. So when initially asked to have this conversation, nervously considering my fear of public speaking, one of my mentors said, jokingly of course, why don't you just sing to them? It's like talking with a melody, and it's who you are anyway. As I laughed in return, I began to seriously consider all of these questions. Who am I? What has gotten me to the point where all of my peers and mentors now know that singing to me is as natural as breathing, and what have I been doing with the gifts that I've naturally and strategically developed? Little did I know that the answers would begin to form long before the questions. I was originally going to start this talk differently, but I wanted to share something with you all that I did this weekend. So that's me, looking very happy and very excited, and I'm also very unaware of all of the stress and the gripping fear and the tears that would come in the next several moments. I know I hide it really well. <laughs> and that's the wall that I climbed. <laughs> and that's, no, you know what, forget that. That's the wall that I conquered. <laughs> this weekend, I conquered fear. This might seem easy to some, but to those with a fear of heights, like myself, you think of all the other things you've done in your life that you've ever been afraid of, all the reasons why they were a lot scarier than what you're currently doing, so that the thing that you're doing isn't so scary anymore. And I was, as I was scaling this wall like Spider-Man, and my life was literally flashing before my eyes, I began to think of all the fears, the biggest fears in my life up until that point, which happened to connect to the largest transition of my young life, stepping onto the University of Washington campus as a freshman. I was excited to begin college, being one of the first people in my family to go in the United States. Coming from a strong Filipino background with a multicultural perspective, meeting new people and experiencing the joys of this diverse campus through my eyes was beautiful and also very intimidating. So I was really not looking forward to joining any clubs or programs or anything like that. So I focused on my pathway to nursing because my mom is a nurse, so I thought that was the most natural fit for me. During that same year, I had a chance to go to Forks, Washington. As part of a program on campus called the Pipeline Project Alternative Spring Break. Over the course of one week, I would go to Forks, Washington and work with elementary school students and create books with them. And I thought, oh, this is great. I love books. I love reading. This is going to be amazing. But I never actually really considered the student, teacher, or education component of the trip, or just how much it would help me define myself. There's me and my students. There's Domingo and Elsa. My first day in the classroom, the question, what do you want to be, was asked by a nine-year-old little girl, wise beyond her years. She was very shy, much like myself, and when I asked her in return, without responding to her question, she told me that her parents said she was not allowed to be a dancer like she wanted. And when I asked her why, she immediately changed her question, and she said, no, who do you want to be? And I never responded, because over the course of the week, her questions made me pause. I had actually always wanted to be a singer because when I sang, I could be whoever I wanted to be. But over the years, I had taken the safe route of being a nurse or going to school to be a nurse and making my family happy, and it's who I thought I was. Then I realized other voices were so loud that my own was stifled. So how could I tell this nine-year-old child whose dreams were just as big as mine, what I could not tell myself. 
that despite my fear of moving forward, self-worth and happiness were more important. That year, I decided to switch my career path from nursing to education because I wanted to understand how children learned, how they always seem to teach adults more than we thought we already knew, and how they, they were so honest and wise beyond their years. And I never looked back. This is what finding and losing self is. When we begin to understand that the evolution of self can come from the inspiration of many selves, from the fear of moving towards our secret dreams, and from the support of unexpected communities. My spring break experience was so profound. Um, I began to tutor students in my neighborhood when I noticed that kids needed a lot of support in math, reading, and writing. Over two years, my business had grown and myself alongside it. Learning from students was my passion. Teaching them how to think and not what to think was the goal. And I realized I didn't have to fit into any one mold anymore. Why should I? My students did not. Just like the many different students I was tutoring and engaging with, I was still the shy student who stepped onto the UW campus. And my first introduction into self-reflection led me into some of the biggest fears of my life, but also the most enriching and rewarding. I became involved with various projects that allowed me to work with students across the spectrum of ages. I needed the support that these diverse networks could provide, but I also wanted to show my students that if I could face my fears, if I could embrace my fear and do it anyway, that they could do whatever they wanted because they had a mentor who was willing to go and climb these mountains with them all over again. These journeys weren't just about me anymore. I was part of a larger network of people, a bigger team, a chorus of voices supporting one another towards each other's dreams. And now I know that I'm an artist, a multi multicultural student, a cousin, a best friend, a traveler, I'm still a singer, and I'm a teacher and an avid learner. I'm my own voice, and I'm aware of all that because I've learned to embrace the concept of fear, and that it should never be louder than the sound of my own victory. Coming full circle, I've been humbled and genuinely surprised as to how far I've come. All I ever wanted to do was sing, but this led me to realize my passion to encourage others to sing whether that be through music, through education, through advocacy, through their own definitions of identity. Some of life's most significant moments happen when you're unaware of your own passions and interests. You subconsciously intertwine the things you think you want to do, the fears you know you have, and the fights between your inner voice and the expectations that others have of you and the person that they think you are. Then, when that magical concoction of identity explodes, you end up right where you needed to be. Looking back, I probably would have never done something as intense as climb a 65-foot rock. I would have never gone up for public speaking to facilitate week weekly lecture to 500 of my peers. I never would have learned how to incorporate my love of singing into fun activities through such programs as Alternative Spring Break and the Dream Project, and growing my community, meeting my mentors, and mentoring others would have seemed impossible. My undergraduate experience has changed my life because it has given it color, culture, character, connections to so many wonderful possibilities, and a lot more awkwardness like having my face stuck to a hard surface with little choice but to climb to the very top. And actually, when I did climb to the very top of that really scary rock and that tiny bell was staring at me in the face, I reached up to grab it and ring it and I yelled with all the voice I had and it felt victorious. Your voice, much like yourself, is like time a stamp across history, a catalyst for change across a span of generations, and an ephemeral image of what was perfect, imperfect, lost, found, and lost once again. 
our challenge is to raise our voices onward to whatever definition of victory that we own. Our challenge without it makes our silence resound louder than any battle cry. We no longer have an option to stifle our voices, our passion, our commitment to our community because you don't just speak for yourself anymore. You speak for your future and the ones who come along with you and after you. Every day that you use your voice, you will have a different one. And that is a promise. And that's okay. Because some days it'll be the loudest song you've ever sung. And other days, it'll be the quietest whisper of what could have happened, what is happening, and what will happen. As you continue to search for where you fit, for the rocks and the mountains that you want to climb, for the songs that you want to sing, you can ask yourself, how does voice look to you? And how does that shape your definition of victory? And before I finish, I want to share a quote passed down by one of my mentors, something I think we could try to reflect on when fear sometimes seems so much louder than our own voices. Many people head to their grave with their music still inside them. Don't let that be you. Thank you.